Hi. When I was a kid, my father had an arcade. It was uh, a special place with an ice cream shop and, and a big yard with benches and swings shaded by a tall eucalyptus tree. As a place, it was nothing fancy, but it played an, an important role in the neighborhood. It was a place where kids would gather to spend their free time playing video games, socializing and planning their next roguery. The, the games themselves were really nothing special by today's standards. But we never got bored of them, We're always competing with each other for a place in the high score list. Then I moved on to study, got a very demanding job, and was left with very little time to play games. In fact, as I grew older, I started being, looking at the games with a more critical eye, judging them against their net worth, their return as to the time I invested in them. But I never really cut my links with them since uh, my uh, academic career was based around in inventing novel computer graphics algorithms, which, such as those that go into modern game engines. But te technology moved on a lot in the last decades. Arcades have all but disappeared, and the games have moved into our living rooms and our desktops, and more recently into our handbags and our pockets. The physical meeting place has been replaced by cyberspace. But the appeal of the games has not diminished. If anything, it has increased. The, the easiest accessibility of games has brought, has brought them into within reach of almost everyone. And recent studies, in uh, recent statistics uh, that uh, were done in the United States, show that actually 60% of all Americans play computer games. And the, the average game ager has increased to over 30 years of age a third of them being over 35, and this is set to increase since uh, virtually every single boy or, or girl under the, the age of 18 is growing up playing games. And we also now have a lot of diversification uh, in, in game journey. They, they range from uh, real-time strategy to simulation, uh, first-person first shooter, and, and, and many others. Uh, games... Um, Games by, uh, one thing the, the games have in, in common, though, all the journeys, is that by their nature, they're designed to, to be engaging. Uh, they, they have the ability uh, to keep the, the user engaged, trying to overcome the, the, the difficulties and achieve progression in the game. Something in, in contrast to, for example, when, uh, when we give a hard problem uh, to school in class, where kids are likely to abandon it quickly. Games provide a, a safe and protected environment where the, the user can uh, fail without worrying know that he will get another chance. They, they provide, and they will, he will be provided with information on his previous performance to help him achieve a better result. Also, the overall goal is broken into smaller tasks so that the, the user can focus and will not be overwhelmed with the ultimate goal of winning the game. Now, given these attributes, we can clearly see that games could be useful for education. And actually, studies, many recent studies have shown that uh, uh, there's a lot of benefits in game-based learning. And educators have been uh, taking notice. In some of the more progressive countries, we see schools um, experimenting and even adopting games to, learn, to teach basic skills such as uh, problem-solving, mathematics, physics, and, and many others. And this goes beyond just schools. I mean, actually, we, say, we see a surge of interest in, uh, in professional education using uh, serious games and simulations. We even see the European Commission has allocated substantial amounts of funding in order to encourage research and development uh, in uh, educational games. But why just be a, a, um, a consumer? Technology has changed drastically over the years, also on the game development side. You don't need to be a, a, a super talented computer programmer or, or have a team of hundreds in order to create a game anymore. It's far more easier. Of course, it, it's, good if you, it's good if you have them if you want to develop a, a big title. But on the other end, Game platforms are, are available, many of them are available for free, which have all the necessary technology and functionality to allow anyone with an idea to develop his own game. 
And in, in, uh, in my team, uh, we've been teaching uh, um, uh, game technologies and uh, developing serious games applications for over a decade now. In one, through one of our recent projects, we, we set out to build a game about the Nicosia uh, of the 19th century. This will bring together a, a, a lot of work we've done on cultural heritage, but we also want to use it to educate the young people to appreciate the, the, the old city and its heritage beyond the coffee, coffee shops and, and bars. Now, we chose the uh, period um, because this is the most recent period where the old ways existed, just before the rapid modernization came um, with the takeover of the, with the British rule. Um, okay. Now, the, the long process of designing and developing a computer game forced us to find out a lot of information about the CD. And through this process, I, I kept on thinking that about the, the old adage that says that if you want to master something, you should teach it. Now, this is something that everyone who ever taught knows about it. If you want to demonstrate the subject to your students, you need to look into it deeper and from many different aspects. Now, here we are trying to teach through a game. Our medium is visual and interactive. It allows the, the user to, look, to focus on every detail. So uh, now, so I through this process, I kept on thinking that the, the, the old adage, it holds true in our case as well. If you want to develop an educational game, you need to master uh, your subject. And uh, let me take you, let me take you uh, through the development, some parts of the development of our computer game, just to give you a more concrete idea of what I, what I mean. Now, the storyline is not so important. Let's say it revolves around some historical events that happen at that period. But it will require the user to be immersed uh, into the virtual city and navigate at eye level, which means that some of the, uh, the, the buildings, uh, the characters, their behaviors, and so on, need to be historically faithful. So let's start from the buildings. Now, many of the landmarks that existed then exist now as well. Some of them are similar, some of them are very different. For example, the walls uh, at the time had no openings. People had to come in and out from the gates. Uh, the gates themselves look different than what they look today. Some of the landmarks don't exist anymore, like the Serai, which was the, the, administrative, uh, the administrative quarters of the Ottomans, doesn't exist. But the majority of the buildings were actually... Uh, re Sorry. were actually residences. And, and these surely look different than what they, they look today. Even, they look even different than the listed houses we have in the old city. Now, on the inside, they had the internal yards, most of them with uh, covered porticos uh, and arches in the Roman style. On the outside, they were more influenced by the, by the Ottoman rules. So they had small windows high up, above high, above eye level. Instead of balconies, they had kiosks, and the, and the doors, they were solid, so people couldn't look through and see the inhabitants. Now, the, of course, there were thousands of, of houses in the city. We couldn't really afford to build all this by hand. So we decided to build them using uh, programming, to program the, 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 the houses. So we, we will use procedural modeling and then pass it on to a software to, to uh, recreate them. Now, that, this means that we need to have explicit rules on how each house was, was built, about the shape, about the architecture, about the, the, the contents, their features, what was inside, wells, trees, and so on, and then uh, apply these rules onto the intricate map of, of Nicosia in, in order to create automatically the, the houses. Now, at any given moment in, in time, the houses were of different ages. Um, and since the, the, the building material in Nicosia is mud, that also meant that many houses were at different stages of disrepair. And this is reported clearly by... Uh, in the accounts of, of uh, travelers at the time. 
In fact, one traveler says he, he walked along the street where there were houses that seemed that must have been fit to very wealthy people uh, in times gone by, but now they're completely derelict. They're just empty shells, uh, broken walls, not much in sight other than some animals like camels and donkeys grazing on, on whatever grows in their yards. And here we see an example of our reconstruction. Now, now, again, editing every house by hand was really not feasible. So we set out to investigate how mud bricks deteriorate in order to do it automatically again. So we developed our own algorithm by finding out how mud brick breaks, quite often when roof tiles move away and the water seeps through the wall, and then created the algorithms that can modify automatically procedurally generated uh, houses and, and uh, create them in an older age. Now, once we have the city, we need to populate it. According to some accounts, the, 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 the city was very multicultural in, in uh, many places. And something that tells us a lot about the, the background of the people, much more than it does today, was the clothing the, the, they were wearing. It, it can tell us about religion, for example. The Christian local was wearing a black fraga, while the Muslim was wearing a white one. It can tell us about the social state, uh, class. It can tell us about uh, the place of residence. Was it from the countryside or from the city? It can tell us about its function. It can even tell us about the age. As people grew older, usually the fraga grew longer. <laughs> now, with... Uh, with the help of uh, our art uh, historians and the uh, Levendis Municipal uh, Museum of Nicosia, we recreated many of the characters that were to be found at the time, including the British traveler who will play an important role in our game. Now, having, having the characters in place, now we need to animate them and give them behavior. Well, this was a place where we had difficulty. We couldn't really find enough information uh, that will give us the particularities of the behavior at the time. Some of the, with a certain degree of confidence, we can, we can say that some behaviors uh, were similar to what we see today. For example, the man kissing uh, the hand of the priest, people walking or kids, uh, kids playing. But uh, there is many other things we don't know. For example, uh, uh, we don't know how they greeted, they, they greeted each other, what was the distribution of the people in the streets, how, how they, uh, m uh, men and women, behave in public. Now, now one, of the, one of the parts of animation that we spent a lot of effort was, was in dancing. With the help of the Cultural C uh, Center of Ayumoloides, we, we recorded a, a lot of uh, the current traditional dances using 3D motion capture just like we see here. Now, we created an online database that can be used if we want to represent uh, an event such as a, a wedding, such as a wedding or, or a festival, but we'll also use it in, in another game we're developing about teaching uh, um, uh, traditional dances. But... Um, Although we can use these dances in our game, however, we, we do know that these uh, um, performances are, are based on um, choreographies that were recorded around the 60s, and they've been typified. Now, we, we don't know exactly how people used to dance 100 years before the 60s. We know they, they must have improvised a lot more in, in, in each village. So this is something we're investigating further. Okay. All the, all, what I said above, I wanted to, to show how we use the, com the computer game development in order to guide our research. It guided us in, in developing novel um, algorithms about modeling and animation and uh, to, to investigate, uh, learn about the city and document, but also understand what we don't know about the, the, the city. Um, okay. Now... One might say this is an overstated example. I mean, your, uh, your uh, average enthusiast wouldn't have the time or, or the resources to go into the depth that we went. Uh, but actually, our experience shows that uh, this is, uh, 
Learning can occur even with a small project in game development. Over the last six years, we've been running a, a, a gaming competition um, locally aimed at teenagers, where we encourage mostly educational uh, content. And uh, so games uh, are developed by teams of three to four people acting as programmers, uh, modelers, designers, and whatever else is needed. Now, one, one comment that has been recurring almost every competition from the teams participating is how much they learn about, uh, about their subject. And, and they learn much beyond the obvious uh, skills, which is programming and uh, reasoning and teamwork, but they, they acquire the deeper learning of the subject matter. So, to conclude, we, we can say that playing games is fun, uh, is fun and educational, but writing your, your, your own game talks to our sense of creativity and exploration, and it results in a more thorough uh, investigation and understanding of the subject. So, my message to all the worried parents, just like my wife, who hate to see their kids spending their time playing games, is stop... Uh, fighting a losing battle to, to, try, to try to stop your kids playing, but rather encourage them and ask them to write their own game.